Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, your secret favourite. And it is time for episode 33 of my Let's Play of Paradise Killer. This might be episode 32 actually. I struggle to keep track. And today we're going to go and cause problems for him. We're going to go have a quick look upstairs at uh, Witness's penthouse. And we're going to ask him many invasive questions, such as where were you on the night of the 24th? What were you doing there? Why did you go away to answer a phone call? Can you shed any light onto the various murders that have been going on? Were you perhaps involved in a secret cultic underground testing chamber? No one really likes to be asked these kinds of questions, so I'm expecting yet more obstruction of quote-unquote justice. After that, I might go talk to Sam Daybreak again, as we slowly work our way through all of the uh, investigatorially necessary secondary investigations, or interviews, rather. Witness to the end. Why were you irritated to see Carmel Carmelina? Is that what she told you? I was surprised. It's unlike her to do- I can't remember what voice I used for this guy previously. It's unlike her to do a social call. Are you suspicious of her? Are you? People do things that are out of character. What do you know about phone number 8332112ES9116RD? I have no idea what number that is. Then why did your phone dial it at midnight last night? I assure you I did not. Why are we doing this dance, Witness? What dance? Do you honestly think I just pulled that number out of my ass, waltzed over here and it will accept no idea as an answer? The council has been murdered. Everyone left on this island is a suspect, a lunatic, an idiot, or all three. I am not in the mood for no idea. I pulled that number from your phone. You dialed it at midnight last night. Midnight last night is when the council were murdered. I'm sorry, Investigator, but I have no idea what that number is. Are you sure the phone records haven't been tampered with? I like the little sweat drops on him. <laughs> the classic uh, anime indicator of someone uh, under stress. There was no evidence of tampering. The records were accessed from your phone via communications verification protocol at communication station 001A. Well, there must be some mistake. A missed dial, perhaps? Okay, sure, a butt dial when the council were murdered. That's the only explanation I can offer. You're hiding something and I'm going to find out what. I think maybe, uh... I mean, we know that there was a, like a remote activation of something, so I wonder if he called that number to activate whatever it was that was remotely activated. I also note he wears several rings, which may or may not be relevant to the person who was murdered with, uh... Wearing, with, by someone wearing a ring. Did you experience a comms blackout last night from the reality folding drive burst? I didn't. When they have occurred before, they've always been hard to pinpoint. They don't affect the whole island. Doomjaz told me you asked about overcoming Henry's inhibitors. The end of an island is endlessly fascinating. A symphony of finales all hanging in the balance. Having a demonically possessed prisoner is a significant risk. I need to know everything there is to know. So you weren't trying to find out how to overcome them to help Henry escape. Don't be ridiculous. How would that help our holy mission? What do you know about the murder of Grace Bloodlines? Wasn't that case solved years ago? Was that it? Okay. Thought I'd get a bit more out of him. Want to chat? I must warn you that I am not one for long conversations. Why plants? The gods tended to us and raised us. Maybe I can hope to have some insight into their brilliance by tending to life myself. I remember that you were a devoted follower of Destroyed Eden. He gallops through the universe, a true majesty. My unwavering devotion to him got through my dark times. He was a light I could follow. Do you want to talk about these dark times? They're behind me now. The old life is gone. Now I only concern myself with holy work. Do not dwell on your past. Embrace the life ahead of you, and let the gods shine upon it. I'll keep that in mind. I am enjoying our conversations, Lady Love Dies. 
There is a sensitive matter which we could discuss further. Do you have something you want to tell the investigator? Things happened while you were in exile, Lady Love Dies. The architect and I became close and we married- Oh, boom, there it is. It didn't last, though. She is obsessed with a perfect island. There wasn't any room in her heart for me or the gods. I've been reluctant to tell you until now, but I am worried about her. Her mind is not on the cosmos. In what way? Do you believe that you should be rewarded for your craft? Craft is a reward unto itself. The architect was like that as well, but dark clouds began to gather over her. Her prayers were not as fervent as they once were. I felt her work was not being done in the name of our starborn masters. She began to crave more validation, more credit for her work. She architects our islands. Without her, we have nothing. Our work is for the gods. They lifted us up and we must do the same for them. Personal reward is a sin that pushes us from their light. I fear she has forgotten this. Well, thank you for confiding in me, witness. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, it seems pretty solid at this point that Carmelina murdered Grace Bloodlines. I don't- I- when I first started playing this game, I thought I would be able to shuffle this evidence around and combine it together, almost like inventory objects, in order to prove that I, the player, had had an intuitive leap. I sh surely I should be able to combine the fact that he had a bad relationship. Wherever that was. Uh, with the murder of Grace Bloodlines, because that's important, that's relevant. You know, he wore a wedding ring in the past while I was gone. And we know he's otherwise connected to the secret lab, and we know he's connected via, via various different ways. I want to call that highly sus. May you fly with destroyed Eden, and may you reach the moon. This is one of my... <laughs> I, it's one of my preferred tracks off of the soundtrack. There's quite a few I don't super like, but there's some I really think are pretty decent bops. Uh, it looks like I missed a Shinji on a rooftop over there. I wonder if I can get there with my... Well, nope, that's a long way down. Most people aren't in a position to appreciate this in life, but um, the thing that really sucks about falling down the side of a building is less the... Uh, that's the fall from top to bottom and the impact when you hit the ground. It's bouncing off of every single window ledge on the way down. If I'm not careful, I'm going to get uh, trapped in rummaging mode. There's a lot of items left to find here in the, uh, the housing district that I have thus far broadly missed. I think, I think I've cleared out most of the other areas pretty thoroughly, but... There's definitely a few things left to find around and up and down. Oh, that's interesting. We've not been able to get inside any of these buildings under any other circumstance. I mean, obviously a lot of them are going to be blood crystals. You can't really do a lot about that. Hey, Shin. You know what I like? Long walks on the beach. Something on the beach, if you know what I'm saying. I was going to say knives. I like knives. I like knife crime. A good stab, an excellent slash. You put a knife in the right hand and you can change the world. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess that's arguably a thematic thesis for this, uh, this game. Oh. That's going to be a fun Shinji to try and reach. Locked from the other side. It's not though. It's back down. It's probably just a boring item down here. What do we have? Malicious secretive cassette. The syndicate monitor all phone calls, so citizens record messages for each other on cassette tapes. Where do they get the cassette tapes from then? See, if I want to reach that Shinji, I have to climb up that tower and then jump down from above. I think I'm going to do that. We will cut and then I'll be right back. 
And here we are on top of the world. As I predicted, I have become completely distracted from what I was doing through the uh, highly tempting uh, avenue of just finding delicious things secreted throughout a world. I Shut up, Shinji. I do love to explore and find things, you know? As a, there's a typology in game design of different kinds of players, which I think, like all, ki all of these kinds of typologies, is extremely arbitrary and kind of meaningless. Um, but one of those types is the explorer who likes to explore and find secrets. It stretches further than you think, Love Dies. This has been millennia in the making. This could bring the whole syndicate down. <sighs> Shinji, did you kill the council? Are you out of your mind, Love Dies? I'm a crippled demon that can barely maintain a physical form. I'm barely in this realm of existence. There's no way I could go crazy with a knife and kill the whole council. Besides, why would I kill the council? Hmm. That's a good question. Revenge or spite? I mean, what would he want revenge for? Spite? You seem the type. I ain't got time for spite. You seem to get on as big a deal as you think you are. Just because you got your noble mission don't mean you shit. There are a lot of planets out there. Don't give me this shit about me killing them. I ain't one of your suspects. It's impossible. Which, again, feels like a direct communication from the developers to the players. Uh, whoop, oh, fuck. Well, that's both of my shins shattered into a million pieces again. Uh, but yeah, no, it feels very much like yet another instance of the developers talking directly to the players. Hey, don't suspect Shinji. He's... Did I miss something with Witness? Huh. Looks like I, I can talk to him about something. Anyway, um, that can wait for another visit. We are going to go talk to the... the uh, the bone dude. The skeleton man. The uh, reddest osseo. I was going to say osseopath, but that means that's like a bone doctor. Uh, what? <laughs> anyway. I'm very tired today, can you tell? I did have one thought, actually, which was that um, I've been wondering about the, the seals themselves, because there's a lot of talk about them as if they're some kind of inviolable cosmic law, but I don't see any reason not to behave around them as if they're just locks, right? Do they have some kind of ritual power that makes them inviolable? Do you have to unlock them in order to get through them? Or can you bypass them? Like, we know that the first seal is two guards on the gate. Is that literally just the, you know... A sequence of barriers by which this door is barred, you know. Two people in front of it telling you to fuck off. A literal physical lock on it. A curse on it. Layers of barriers like that. Or do they all exert a kind of a mystical force? Because if it is literally just a kind of a physical barrier of two men standing in front of the building telling you to go the fuck away. That's- oh fuck. That seems extremely bypassable to me. I suppose the idea is just that they are strong enough to repel any any particular invader, but... Um, you know, there's no real reason to assume that that would work. In fact, it's reasonable to assume most members of the Syndicate could probably kill a couple marshals. I say most. Several. We know that the Daybreaks are skilled assassins. Um, Lady Love Dies is some kind of a cop thing. Carmelina was apparently perfectly capable of strangling a woman to death, despite the fact that she is like a waifish architect, so... I mean, on the other hand, you can't trust architects. Anyway, um... Yeah, like, we know that there's a back way in uh, that you could access by rappelling down the back of the council building, because we found it previously, so if that's the case... Is this, why is there all this grandiose talk of a mystical seal? When it's literally just two dudes that you can, like, walk past. Is this a flaw in their system? Or is this a flaw in my understanding? Or is this just a plot hole? Because it seems like there's quite a few plot holes going on. And you know, when you see a plot hole, it's easy to think, okay, well, there's any number of answers to this. But... You know what, I'm going to come back to him next episode. Because he might take a while. And uh, I'm on the clock today. I'm trying not to take too long. 
because of my busted, fucked up lungs, which make me broadly incapable of doing various breathing related activities if I talk too much. Hey, were those guys there previously? Oh, I bet they've gone to investigate the, like, tap I opened on the roof. What's going on? The dead zone is leaking demonic gas. The purifying system seems to have failed. Now stay back. I wonder if that means I can't get back in there. Stay back, freak. Because I do, I do kind of want to go uh, have another look around that lab and see if there's maybe some other other facts I can uncover. But I should probably do that after I talk to uh, poor Henry Division. The only innocent man in all of this uh, entire cosmos. Anyway, I'm just ra rambling and running around now. I'm going to use my vision power and um, go look at some objects. Because why not? Looks like I found everything up there. I, ha I guess I did pretty thoroughly clear this place out. There's only a few things that I've missed. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Actually, walking past that statue of Crying Grudge has reminded me. Uh, when I came to start recording today, I looked down at my... Oh, I can hear it, but where is it? Ah, sneaky. Got to make sure I earn enough drain dollars. Otherwise, I'll never be able to pay for a plumber. Anyway, yeah, I glanced down at my notebook and saw the phrase No Shinji's on Crying Grudge Island. And I, I sat there for several minutes trying to figure out what possible, like, poetic meaning this could hold. What on earth did I mean by that? Why would I be comparing Shinji Yukari from Evangelion to this game? And why would I be... Why would I be making some kind of connection to... You know, to this game, but, like... Am I, am I speaking metaphorically by referring to this place as Crying Grudge Island, considering it's a gr an island full of miserable, grudge-prone... I'll be honest, assholes. This is Asshole Island, uh, which is also the title of a very popular series of um, homosexual uh, masculine porn videos, but that's uh, an interest for another time. But yeah, no, it took me several minutes to remember that there's, a full, there's just a character in this game called Shinji, <laughs> and Crying Grudge is one of the gods. It's got nothing to do with crying or grudges. It's just a pair of evocative nouns that the devs decided they liked putting together. Ah, I was worried these would all be crystals. You know, these one-way doors have started to get a lot easier to open since I uh, developed the ability to teleport forwards short distances. Resonant photo of a man. Sadness drips from this photo. I think resonant photos are a, a real concept from, uh, like, occultism. Something to do with uh, taking photographs of psychic occurrences. Wonderful crystallized tears. When the moon shimmers, the right mix of intense sadness and anger may cause tears to crystallize as they fall. I wonder if that's a reference to um, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Which did notably notably feature a tear falling from the sky, having crystallized. I would say that that's too deep of a cut, but I feel like that's exactly the kind of arbitrary referent this game would indulge in. Parkour, baby. Oops. When you have when you have jet boots, parkour gets a little bit less consistent. Let's say. Hmm. There's a lot of them over there that I've missed. I wonder which part of the island that is. They could be up on the bluffs, maybe? I'm astonished that I've managed to absolutely rinse all of these apartments, though. <laughs> I really thought I would have missed several more objects. Where was that one? See if I can detect it by um, physically unpleasant sound effect radar. Ah, 
Oh, we're getting closer. As the squibbly, scrabbly sound slowly grows. Oh, I've lost it. What's the betting this is another, uh, another crystal? I feel like the difficulty of, of attaining this location should have made it a little bit more rewarding, but whatever. Now is not the time to be salty about that. Anyway, so I'm going to actually go run back to where I was and go catch up with Sam Daybreak, who's over there, in that way direction. And that's where I'll call it for today. Bit of a slow, sleepy episode, but that's fine, because I'm a bit of a slow, sleepy robot today. Not a lot of energy. My, my batteries are heavily drained. But you know what? Better an episode where I'm sleepy and dozy than no episode at all. So, frankly, you all are lucky I'm even still doing this. I jest, I jest. I make these because I like to make them. But man, I am very disappointed with how uh, inconsistent my scheduling has been this year. But hey, that's what happens when you contract a previously unknown to science disease and uh, are hospitalised for it and spend two years recovering. Anyway, or... Yes, that's... Let's go with that. Anyway, so... Uh, come back next time if you want to hang out with the objectively coolest dude on this entire ranch. Sam Daybreak. The only skeleton man we know. Why is he a skeleton? Don't know. How is he a skeleton? Also don't know. Will those answers be questioned? That's not how English works. Join me next time and we'll find out. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe and share. I also stream on Twitch and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.